What's up guys, Evil D here, and today I'm just going to do another random language vlog where I just talk about language stuff I'm doing at the moment. I'm probably going to do a lot of this over the next week until my course starts, and then I'll probably start speaking more about acting. But, you know, languages is like a big part of who I am. I just love exploring them, love exploring the random facets of languages. Probably just starting and stopping like thousands of languages at once. I don't know, that's the type of personality I've got. Earlier today, I was in the Volapuk group in Facebook. Now, I'm just going to say this right up. For those who don't know, Volapuk is a created language. Language. It's like one of the first, it's not the first, but actually it's the first successful created language that took off for a while and then kind of died off once Esperanto took over, which is like the language I speak fluently. Volapük is so fascinating for me in so many different ways. One, because it's like, was the first serious attempt that actually worked. What's even more fascinating for me recently is the fighting or the rivalry, not the fighting, the rivalry that existed between Esperanto and Volapük at a time when they were kind of fighting for top dog spot. And I just I found this um, article today that was actually translated by a Volapük speaker um, out of German, I believe, into English, and it was written by um, Martin um, Schleier. I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but anyway, he's the guy who invented Volapük, and he's basically just dissing the hell out of Esperanto. And I'm reading this going, dude, ow, that's really harsh. Like, why would you be so mean? But it's, it was just funny. Like, I'm going to read a couple of things that he said. This is, this is just, it's awesome. Like, one of the things he was saying is that he thinks Esperanto was, like, seriously ugly because it only uses a limited number of vowels, which is something I consider like being one of the good things about Esperanto because it makes it a lot easier to understand because people pronounce vowels differently and, you know, with English horse and house, for like an English speaker that's so easy, but for a Chinese speaker that they, they can't hear the difference unless they've really drilled it into them. The fact that he's like, oh, Volapük has so many more vowels, I, I, I take that as a downside, but for him he saw Esperanto as being like very mechanical because of that. One thing he seemed to really dislike about about Esperanto was the fact that it only had one case, the accusative. He he kept talking about, you know, how Volapük's so much better because it's got these other cases which make things so much more precise. And it's interesting now because maybe back then that was a good thing, but nowadays everyone's like, Esperanto has the accusative case, why would you do that? Like, why would you have case markers? It makes things so much harder. But for his thinking, it was like the cases made things easier. So in conclusion, he says this, he who loves an expensive, time-consuming, unusable, and unpleasantly sounding hodgepodge, mismatch, and blubber language, he may learn boastfully blazoned hype language of the Pseudo esp or other language fakers of Volapük. Wow, that is a that is a mouthful of insults right there. But he who wants a true world or universal language, which is really fast to learn, which saves time, space, effort and money, which is vigorous and vibrant in sound and which was introduced without hype, he then who wants a simple, succulent and practical thinker's language, he may most joyously learn Volapük and remain true to Volapük, which is daily spreading even further over the whole earth and which now has nearly 1,800 graduated teachers of both sexes. You could see right there, he thought Volapük was going to become the language and it was just going to flatten Esperanto. It makes me wonder what he would be saying right about now because obviously Esperanto has not become the international language but it has clearly supplanted Volapük in every single way. Most people just look at Volapük as like an interesting thing from history. The fact that like I'm reading such a boastful statement about Volapük and now looking back on it in hindsight type of thing it's just it's really fascinating to me. Okay so the other things I've been doing is I've been learning more Chinese characters. I feel like my life at the moment is literally just memorizing stupid little stories to learn Chinese characters. And finally from that, I actually went a little bit crazy with Latin today. So I was speaking with Kaya, my mate, who's an Esperanto speaker, and I was like, dude, let's learn Latin. He's like, okay, we'll do it. And we're like, yes, we're going to be like the only fluent Latin speakers in Sydney. And then we're going to be like on a train and we're going to speak Latin together with each other. And some random dude's going to go, hey, what, what language are you speaking? We're going to be like, we're speaking Latin, man. He'll be like, whoa, you're speaking Latin. Why did you learn Latin? We'll be like, no, man. This is our native language. Latin's been in our family for like 200 generations. And we've just got like this whole story plan where we're just going to bullshit our way through it. And then, you know, something's going to go crazy. Next thing we're going to be on the news was like the only native Latin speakers left in the world. And we're going to have to carry this bullshit story because we just couldn't help ourselves. But yeah, anyway, I went crazy with Latin today. I downloaded this, um, it's basically like Latin by direct method type of thing. It's like the Esperanto Recta Metodo. Anyway, the book's called Lingua Latina. 
and that's not an Esperanto name. That's the name in Latin. So in Latin it would be um, lingua latina. That that's literally the difference of pronunciation there. There's very few differences in pronunciation between Esperanto and Latin. Like just the V becomes a W. A couple of the vowels are different. Like obviously there's like length of vowels within Latin, but I'm not even really concentrating on that at the moment. In fact, I'm not even really learning how to pronounce it. I'm just kind of winging it, going along, because I just want to be able to read it first, like as much as possible, so I can just have like um a text message conversations with Kaya and other Latin speakers, I guess. I'll just listen to videos of people who are speaking it, and I guess my ear will just kind of come acquainted to the language, and then I'll just start speaking it that way. I'm just picking up on like the small differences, like obvious ones, like, you know, V becomes a W sound. Anyway, that's where I'm pretty much at. I don't know what I'm going to be learning tomorrow. It's probably going to be another language, but that's me. Hey, so if you like this video, like it, share it around, and sub to the channel if you haven't already. And guess what I just pulled out of the cupboard? That's it, that's it. If you like it, you know what to do. Share it, sub, all that good stuff. Catch you all.